this work was, uh, I worked on it for months in, in Donetsk and then uh, it was planned to be installed in, at Izolatsia, which is an art centre in Donetsk in the east of Ukraine. And then, as you all know, this war started and it, it uh, couldn't be completed. So really it's an attempt to um, think in a new way about geological time, I guess, and trying to connect uh, human time with geological time and think about geological contingency and how geologic reality is, has in some way determined human behaviour because in this time of thinking about the Anthropocene we could sort of easily just imagine that we have created this technospheric world and kind of created this Anthropocene by human will alone but I think that the geology has an agency of its own and this is the, one of the points that I'm trying to make here is the geology is, um, has its own effect on, on the human. So when I was in Donetsk for the first time, I discovered that uh, this very interesting city was founded by a British person in 1869. So I was, became very interested in the, in the history um, of it. This, as I sort of began to un unravel this strange history of this character called John Hughes and his, and his creation of, of this, the city of Donetsk, I began to sort of realise that I couldn't stop. Every part of this, this modern human history somehow connects to geological time. And in Donetsk this is very, very evident because this, the city is, uh, is based on the coal, and, um, coal industry and steel industry. And that's the reason why it exists. Um, so it was a kind of site-specific work. We were talking about this earlier. It's like a began as a site-specific work, but then um, I began to realise that this, there was no end to the site. You know, it, it, this, this city stretched all the way back through to the to the beginning of time itself. So the problem began how to visualise that or how to try and think about the geologic time at the same time as, as uh, human time. So this is why we've, the, the diagram begins with the Big Bang here, because it's impossible to like, think about these things without going back to the very beginning. And then it became like a really interesting exercise in, in understanding scale. One metre of the diagram represents 100 million years, and it ends up here. And then, I guess you've all looked at this, but I'll just make the point again, that the, the whole of human civilization exists in the last 0 0.1 millimetre in the end here. So this is like, starts to um, eat away at the conceit of the Anthropocene concept somehow. It shows how, how minute and insignificant human activity has actually been in terms of its time scale. And there's a whole load of things here which are really nice, in, for me anyway, <laughs> um, about how the, uh, the different geological contingencies actually created the conditions for, for the coal to be in Donetsk and therefore the human activity. So behind Zbigniew here is the Carboniferous period, which is not very long ago in, in geological timescale. And this is when obviously the, the biosphere, the living organisms of the planet, like actually affected the geology of the planet and sucked the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and locked it into the, into the lithosphere. So in the, in the diagram you've got uh, four lines at the end here to the atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere. So, you know, the, the air, the life, the water and the, and the rocks. And it basically just shows how different chemicals and different materials transfer between these different layers by different contingencies. In this case, it's life itself has made this happen. In other, other parts of the diagram, it's, it's uh, tectonic plate movement or whatever. So you've got all of this. And then the plan then is in the next room, because the, the, this part of the installation is really only temporary. In the next room, my job over the next month is to try and connect the actual human conditions of Donetsk into this line to try and understand how the geology affected the culture and how the culture affected the geology, I guess. So um, these are some of the 
mater materials, historical materials that I've collected whilst I was spent some time in Donetsk and also later on. And um, the first thing you notice about this city for on this, from this map, all of these red rings here are, are coal mines. So the city is built around a whole series of coal mines, which is quite unusual. And there's this real sense of the city being like a frontier land in some way. So the city was only founded in 1869, as I said uh, earlier on, by this guy, John Hughes. He was a son of a miner from Wales, and he trained himself to be an engineer. He was illiterate, couldn't, couldn't read or write. And then he eventually, when the, when the coal started to disappear in Wales, he, he moved to London and started a factory making iron fortresses, like sort of military equipment out of iron. This is what, uh, where the Tsar like, f headhunted him. So the Tsar had, like, had a bit of a difficult time in the Crimean War in the 1850s, like lost that one. And the reason why he thought he'd lost it was because, uh, because of like, a lack of um, military technology. So he headhunted John Hughes and invited him to come to, to the steppe, to the Ukrainian steppe, to create a, an ironwork so that he could make him iron defensive systems. And John Hughes turned around to him and said, no, you don't need that. What you need is a railway because, you know, Russia is 100 years behind everybody else and the reason is because you don't have a railway. So the Tsar accepted his proposal and he came and, like, this, the legend is that he walked out across the steppe with his uh, 200 Welsh... Um, engineers and workers and like entered this territory which there was absolutely nothing there's just like one hut this is the story right there's like one one small house in the middle of the steppe in 1869 and then 20 years later it has a population of half a million people and it produced Donetsk at the time at that time it was producing 75 percent of the iron for the for the Russian Empire so it was like huge industry and it just like sprung up from nowhere and the growth curve of the city just went like this, you know. It's a kind of case of completely un, unfettered or unbound capitalism. And another interesting thing to, to think about is how the, the money raised for this project was raised in London. Then the whole city developed really quickly and then it was destroyed in the Russian Revolution. It was destroyed in the first... World War, it was destroyed, or much of the infrastructure of the city was destroyed in the Second World War, and every time it was rebuilt. And now, of course, the, with the current war, there's, there's a, like a similar thing happening, although much of the resources are now maybe less, and industry is kind of maybe not at its best, but um, it's a convenient location, perhaps, for, for geo, geopolitical leverage because uh, the, the city has, a, like it does have something of an identity crisis, and, but, the, but the roots of that are in, in, the very, in the speed of its creation, I think, and the fact that the population of the city was brought from all over the Soviet Union during Stalin's time to populate the city. In fact, all of these materials, all of these photographs and these documents, I found, all found them in an archive in Wales, in the, the uh, Glamorgan archive. So they were all things which were taken back by the Welsh people as they returned after the revolution. Fi well, we talked about this earlier, right? The finality of the project, because it, it can't ever stop, <laughs> because history keeps on being made. Um, but, but yeah, so the, the diagram will continue into the room, into this wall. This will probably go, and the, the line will continue around here. And then all of these materials and other materials which we have as well will will connect into the line. And these are what these, these drawings are. They're kind of like sketches for how I might be able to express how the human conditions actually affect the geology. So there's different ideas about, um, like in the, in the line in there, you start with everything all together. And then you have the first atmosphere. So the materials divide into atmosphere and crust. And then they divide into atmosphere, ocean and crust, and then, they, and then the biosphere emerges, so it divides again. So in this room it also needs to divide several more times, I think, because uh, it needs to have the technosphere, you know, the extraction of the coal and the, and the iron to make machines. This is a new sphere, so it needs five lines. And then there's also the effect of capital 
um, which is sort of begins to get thought about here. So capital it has to be an element. And then there's population and the movement of people and maybe trauma and violence and uh, maybe the railways should be separate too. And it just starts to become more and more complicated. And this is one of the things that I really like about this, this format of, of making this kind of diagram. It, it tries to express um, humanity and human culture as just another effect of materials. Like the materials that you see on the end of the line, at the, very, at the very last point where you have the four spheres, are the same materials that we began with at the Big Bang, although, albeit stellar nuclear synthesis changes things, but it's all the same stuff, you know? It's like I'm, I'm also geology, <laughs> and so are you. And we're also machines, and machines are also part of the planet, and all of it. So it's like beginning to try and think about those things as well. So it's going to be quite complicated, I think. And this is another interesting thing as well to me, is like uh, how as time progresses, as the line gets further along, the reactions and interactions between materials within it just become more increasingly complicated. But it's still, still the same amount of material, but the interactions are more complex.